Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and we are here at Fee Week. And one of the topics today is citizen science. And I'm standing with Margaret Gold, who's from the European Citizen Science Association. Margaret, first question What is citizen science? Citizen science is um, a number of forms of scientific research that involves people without scientific training and various stages of the process. So they can be helping with data gathering, they can be helping with the process of data, they can be helping, helping with data analysis. It's getting them involved at any stage. But how can they get involved? I guess they need the internet for that. Uh, it's one of the ways to get involved indeed. There's two famous examples. One is data gathering where you can use your mobile phone and any range of sensors that are on your phone or simply taking a photograph and having geolocation data attached to that and it can be shared to, to a website where then you, your data becomes part of an aggregate picture. Or, or you're shown a photo on a website and you're saying what's in the photo. So if, for example in um, deep space photos, is it a, is it a a nebula, is it a galaxy, is it a spiral galaxy? So people are getting involved in many ways. Okay, so there are a lot of applications in, uh, in the space sector, of course, for citizen science, particularly for Earth observation. What's going on there? With Earth observation, it's really fascinating because we've got this amazing quality data that the satellites around the Earth are taking of our, of our Earth close up. There's a lot of data available. It tends to be fairly technical and not so easy to access for people, but you need data on the ground as well to augment that data, to make it much more richer. There's a concept called ground truth, where you show, you show what's actually happening on the ground and compare that to a satellite photo to get the full picture of exactly what it is you're seeing. And citizens can get involved in that too, and it adds an awful lot of rich information about things like land use, how land cover is changing, how land use is changing, um, agricultural ap applications, but also urban city applications, and perhaps most, um, most important these days with climate change being a concern, also natural disasters and humanitarian disasters, and responding to that on the ground. Now, of course, another topic here uh, that we're talking about here is um, artificial intelligence. I understand in artificial intelligence, you're teaching the, the AI how to recognize things on the ground. So are citizens helping AI when they're doing this sort of ground truth uh, data collection? There's some really fantastic projects that are giving examples of exactly that. So there's a project called the Plastic Tide, for example, which is very concerned about the amount of plastics that are in our oceans. And the scientists have, are taking drone photos of coastlines and showing the plastic that's, in, that's all along our coastlines lines and individuals can sit down at their computer whenever they've got some spare time and look at photos and they're circling hard plastic, soft plastic, um, fishing nets that are falling apart and by doing that they're training the algorithm behind it, making that algorithm stronger and stronger so it can start doing that identification. Now citizen science is not only important for the scientists but Europe has also recognized this. Of course citizen science is a priority in the open science policy platform. How is citizen science and open science connected? They're really closely related. One of the things that citizen science stands very strongly about is about science being available for everybody. That data is available for everybody. That data should be open. Um, so open science is partially about open open data but also data outcome, the science outcomes from data should be accessible to anybody and citizen science is very much about that. And it goes even further in citizen science that you can say for yourself what it is you're passionate about in your own neighborhood. Maybe it's air quality, maybe it's noise pollution. You can de design for yourself a project to investigate that, to bring about policy change, management of the environment change. Um, if people can take charge of that themselves and that's also open science. So if I'm a non-scientist, but I do want to participate in citizen science, science, what should I do? I would start with your local community or your local, your city or your, your larger area, like a province or a state. There's some amazing projects that are, that are across all of Europe in various places. Looking at water quality and air quality, for example, also looking at land cover and land use. Um, also looking at biodiversity and whether local, uh, local plant life or local um, insects or birds are starting to, to, to disappear or maybe their patterns are changing changing and, you, and people can get involved in any of those. So we can all be scientists. Margaret, thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space, about our planet, or about citizen science, visit our website at www.esa.int.